What's up guys, it's John Reeves Live, and today we're going to be checking out the last episode of the Bandmade documentary, but before we get into this, I would like to say a big thank you to Mason, our Patreon, for suggesting this to us, Odin J for getting this entire thing together, like this is an amazing accomplishment, I think for the fandom, I love this idea, and it has sparked so much inspiration in me, I love this Thank you very much for setting this whole thing up. Last but not least, Casper Mitchells for doing an amazing job on the voice over here. I think you crushed it, man. And I absolutely love the fact that I saw you in our comments recently. So thank you for checking this video of our reaction out. You've crushed this. All around amazing project, and I really love this for the fandom. It's not only helped, I'm sure a lot of people kind of grow to know Bandmade more, but also myself, I had no idea a lot of these things, and it makes me appreciate this band even more just by knowing all the things that it took for them to get here. It really makes them more like personable and also just a very unique, unique band. So, and saying that, if y'all are new to my channel, please smash that sub button and let's get into this last episode together. Three, two, one, boom! I freaking love that intro. Yes. We are in Kumamoto, a city located in the prefecture with the same name on the island of Kyushu. This is where Kobato Miku was born ah! a few decades ago. Her parents were a remarried couple and she has a half brother who's 11 years older from her father's previous marriage. Hmm? As you could imagine, she was a very active child, much to the dismay of her parents, who struggled to keep an eye on her, as she was the kind of child who snuck out of her house to play or run all <laughs> around as soon as she was taken to large <clears throat> open spaces. I like it. She loved to play with boys at games like Chanbara, which is basically <laughs> sword fighting for kids, or catch insects in the summer, but those little trips and games cost Miku a lot of bumps and bruises. Aww. Miku was introduced into music very early by her grandmother, who went to an Enka karaoke class. Oh, when nice. she was around seven or eight, Miku fell in love with music and singing as she followed her grandmother to local public hall gatherings. At this time, Miku only knew Enka, so that's all she sang. The first song she hmm. learned was Jindo Monogatari by Yoshimi Tendo. Oh, wow. Well. Good God. I feel like whenever I was just straight up only singing metal, only listening to metal, only consuming metal music in my whole life, I was very skeptical of everything I listened to. Now, every single thing I listen to, I'm like, man, I can learn something interesting from every single piece of music that I listen to, like be it a vocalist, be it a guitarist, drummer, whatever I'm listening to, I can learn something from it. This lady right here just did a lot of really freaking cool stuff actually in that performance that was really interesting the more you open yourself up to just music being awesome and finding something good about everything i think it's like you start learning something about like everything that's awesome i love that was worried that miku would only be interested in enka so she asked her to listen to other musical genres oh, nice. and offered her a cd of the idol band morning musume <laughs> And so, yes. with time, Miku came to experience and listen to more and more different kinds of music. That's awesome. In high school, Miku was in the broadcasting club. <laughs> <laughs> of course she was. <laughs> this is the club responsible for those announcements that you hear in the school from time to time, like morning or lunch break. Oh, break. God, yes. Back then, Miku's friends were really into bands and took her to live performances of smaller amateur groups covering popular songs. That's cool. Miku was not that interested in the bands, but this experience made her look into more bands to listen to. During her research, she came across Tokyo Jihen, a Japanese rock band formed around the popular singer Sheena Ringo. I 
love the music here, man. Miku was stunned by their sound and finally found the music that she wanted to do. Hell yeah. It was also during this time that Miku's parents got divorced uh -huh. and her father totally disappeared from her life. From then on, she had to live with her grandmother. It was a hard time for her and her family, but mm -hmm. she tried to find a proper high school and think about her future. No time to think about making music for a living, even though this idea was starting to grow in her mind. When she was at university, Miku missed a lot of classes because she was working part-time to earn enough money to participate in multiple auditions in Tokyo. The problem was, That's she never cool. told her mother about all her travels to the big city. And the more Miku went to Tokyo, the more she wanted to live there. So, yes. in October awesome. 2010, on her birthday, Miku presented her I want to live in Tokyo plan to her mother to <laughs> try and reassure her. This plan was basically to find enough part-time work to pay for her life there, along with vocal training. Miku knew that living in a big city like Tokyo would cost a lot, so she took as many jobs as she could. Dang! At one point, she had three different jobs, leaving her with just a few hours of sleep per day. Oh my god! She was willing to do anything to realize her dream. One of her jobs was at a maid cafe in Kumamoto. <laughs> This is the kind of job that fit her perfectly, as Thank she you. was very interested in customer service, loved to talk to people, mm -hmm. and loved the idea of wearing a cute outfit at work. <laughs> this particular maid cafe uh, only lasted six months, until December 31st, 2010. It's hard for this kind of business to last in local cities like Kumamoto because of the lack of new customers daily. Mm. With nothing holding her back in Kumamoto and enough money from all her hard work, Miku quit university and yeah. moved to Tokyo to oh start God. a new life pursuing her dream of becoming a singer. I freaking love her origin story. That is so cool, man. Like, seriously, the fact that she just worked her butt off. And in her plan, it was not only to save up for housing, but also for vocal lessons. Like, that shows so much work ethic, in my opinion, man. What a freaking awesome person. Now that she was living in Tokyo, Miku easily found a part-time job as she had already a lot of experience from her life in Kumamoto. Thank you. Miku discovered the concept of maid cafe in her hometown, so she thought that it would be a good idea to try and work in a maid cafe in Akihabara, the place I'm where maid cafes are the most popular in Japan. She started to work at the At Home Cafe in May 2011 under the name Himawari, which means Sunflower. Aww. This maid cafe was way bigger than the one in Kumamoto, and this one held performances and events where Miku could work on her singing regularly. All right, listen, I'm going to do a pilgrimage, okay? I'm freaking going there. I'm going to go to at home, and I'm going to take a picture, and I'm going to post it on this YouTube channel of me at that place. I'm going to be like, Miku started here! Uh, it was a great experience. If it's still open, I don't know. As she learned a lot about human relations, handling different types of people, and even Aww. calming down angry customers arguing with each other. After all, Miku wanted to do everything to make everyone happy. She also learned a lot from overseas customers and how they perceive made cafes as a part of the Japanese culture. <laughs> Miku worked almost a year for At Home Cafe, but quit in January 2012. She had a ceremony celebrating her time working there, and there was a lot of messages from regulars and overseas customers. She even wrote a moving message on the blog of the maid cafe. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 
撮影会したり錬金だったり振り返ってみたらいろいろしたな自分がイベントするなんか思ってもなかったけどまさか卒業するとはに<笑>あ書き損ねたんですがスーツで来てくれたご主人様ありがとうございました私得でしたあと素敵なお花もありがとうあとチェキの受け取りがまだの方なるべく早くお絵かきしてドンキに持っていきますので<笑>後日ドンキへお願いしますごめんなさいいろんなことがあったりしたけどやっぱり私はアットホームが大好きです8ヶ月間で出会ったご主人様やお嬢様メイドさんを絶対に忘れませんアット中だった私が全く秋葉原に行かなくなるなんて到底無理な話なのできっとまたお会いすることもあるかもしれません<笑>もしまたどこかで私を見かけたらよろしくお願いします私にとってこれからがスタートだと思ってますみんながくれた気持ちを胸に頑張っていきたいと思いますさよならはしないですありがとうございましたいいな頑張りますひまわり The reason why she left <笑> was because she'd won the super idol audition on no the way! 7th 2011 This competition、Damn. started in the summer of 2011 With 2,600 applicants. Wow. Their goal was to create a three member idol band with the votes of the fans. The Super Idol audition was also broadcast on MXTV on December 30th, 2011. It's awesome. It's awesome. <laughs> 頑張っていきたいと思いますのでまだまだなんだろう未熟なところとかいっぱいあると思うんですけど一緒に応援していただけたらなと思いますと私は熊本から出てきたんですけどすごい親にもいい報告ができてアルバイト先のこのメイドさんをしてるんですけど常連さんも見に来てくれていい報告ができることがすごくすごく嬉しいですこれから頑張っていきますありがとうございました Can I just say kudos for getting all these videos together? This is looking so freaking good, and this is so cool to actually be able to go back and see all this stuff. My God, seriously amazing, amazing work doing research. This is freaking awesome. This contest allowed Miku to join an underground idol band. Underground or idol band? Idol in Japanese, <laughs> named so cool. Lil Kuman, three months later, in March 2012. An underground、Lukumen? idol band works with a minor label and will only perform in very small areas or events. It's well known that very few underground idol bands can become bigger and join a major label,、mm -hmm. so the chances for Lil Kuman to get bigger were really small. No pun intended.、Hmm? The name of the band came from the very short height of the three members, and that the birth flower of December 9th, when the result of the audition was announced, Was Kuman. Lil Kuman was active until April 13th, 2013, when they announced they had disbanded during a one man concert in Shinjuku Orebako、mm -hmm. due to Miku and another member quitting the band. About a month after the release of the third single called Super Trooper and their first one man concert in the same venue. But look how good she's doing! In the end, Lil Kuman released three singles and performed about a hundred shows during a year of activities. In an interview, Miko、mm -hmm. confirmed that it was not her thing to sing cute idol songs.、Yeah. She didn't hate it, but it was too different from the music she wanted to sing. I think it's awesome she, like,
I respect this a lot that she was able to walk away from that because like obviously you can tell that whenever she did win this audition and she got this moment in her life it was like a big break for her so for her to be able to walk away from that because she knew creatively that's not what she wanted to do I don't know if she had anything like going on in the background where she could be like I'm leave this to go do this but it's very admirable for her to be able to pursue creativity over some form of success you know what I mean like if she got a little bit of success there it's probably really hard for people to not lean into that success as opposed to really try to find what you're passionate about. So I think that's cool. Back to square one for Miku, mm-hmm. who decided to send her resume to Platinum Passport, explaining the kind of music she wanted to do. The company reached back to Miku and yes. scheduled a meeting to talk about her project. Let's imagine an abbreviated form of this conversation. はじめまして。小鳩ミクと言います。出身は熊本です。地元と秋葉原のメイドカフェで働いていました。オーディションに受かってアイドルグループで活動していたんですが、アイドルではなく歌手になりたくて1年ほど辞めさせていただきました。自
it speaks volumes to her character for her to actually be like, listen, this might not work with my voice as well as I thought it was going to. We might need to get another vocalist for this. That speaks a lot about her character as a person and how much she just wanted this band to actually work. So I think that's really, really cool. And made members and management found the profile of a recently scouted young singer to whom they proposed to audition. She was a model, dancer, singer, who came to Tokyo to realize her dream of becoming a professional singer. And her name was Psyche. With their newfound experience gained while recruiting the other members, the management knew that they shouldn't talk about the main outfit to Psyche if they wanted her to come to the audition. <laughs> yeah. So, they didn't. <笑>メイドです。言われた。言わなかったんです。ああ。今までのこのあの見て、くるっこは学習したみたいで。なるほど、なるほど。さいちゃんには言わないで誘おうと思って。可愛い服なんだけどって言っちゃった。可愛い服
Band may try to participate in Battle of the Bands with some other idol bands, oh, nice. but very few people from the audience were actually there for them. So they oh. tried everything to expand their fan base. They promoted their merch every time they could. They took photos and thanked fans for coming to see them. Hmm. Niku worked in a noodle cafe in Akihabara until 2016, and she also sold tickets by hand. The oh noodle cafe was a service operated by Platinum Passport, where you buy a cup of noodles and you can choose which idol will pour hot water into the cup. What? Then you will have around three minutes to talk with her until the noodles are ready. Until the first one-man show in Shibuya Milky Way, Misa was very unsure about her future in Bandmaid and talked to the management about quitting. Uh -huh. And for this particular concert, the management booked a venue and asked the members to invite at least 100 people. In the Dang. end, they managed to get around 50 of their friends and acquaintances in the front row. Uh -huh. It was truly a dark time for Bandmaid. Oh, man, I it feel this so much. That, time that they released the MV of Thrill from their first single, Fruit. I to Jonetsu no Matadoru. Making you get. Hell yeah. Okay, I have to say this really quick. So, <clears throat> whenever I was early on in my musical career, my band had been playing a lot of shows and we just got off tour. So, we were doing like pretty okay. We booked a show in Nashville to be like a showcasing. So, we invited a lot of the local labels. We invited the local radio station out. We invited like all these people out. We got a lot of people saying they were going to come out. So, I was like, let's get a lot of our friends' bands on it. It will be a huge celebration, just a good time for everybody to really be able to get in front of these record labels as well as us. But if I'm going to like be in front of some people, I want my friends to be there as well too and be able to play in front of these same record label people. People. So that was kind of my game plan. Well, we booked like five bands on the show. Each band that was supposed to go on after us kept coming up to me and being like, hey man, do you mind if we go before y'all? We've got to do this. Hey man, do you mind if we go before y'all? We got to do this. One o'clock in the morning rolls around and we are finally getting loaded on stage. It was sold out. We sold the freaking exit in out. But by the time that one o'clock in the morning rolls around, nobody's there. There's literally like me, a couple of my friends that were still there, and uh, it's probably like 20 people in the crowd. Most every single one of the record people left. Horrible moment. So I totally understand where they're coming from with like that being a dark time for them and not being able to get all that. But I think it's awesome that they pushed through all that adversity and they're where they are now. The song released in November 2014 <clears throat> was different from what they usually do and even very different from the main song of this single. Oh, wow. Hmm. Thrill was a success on YouTube and was very well received during concerts. A few months later, on April 5th, 2015, Thrill was uploaded on a Facebook page called J Rock Radio. Oh, nice. This page introduced music from Japan, like Visual K or metal bands to people from overseas. And the video gathered more than 1 million views in four days. Oh, damn. In comparison, it took 17 days for the music video of Unleashed to hit 1 million views. And that was the fastest any band made video grew. Dang! The response of band made social media from overseas fans was huge. So huge that they were afraid that their Twitter account had been hacked. <laughs> they also opened their Facebook page on April 9th, 2015, following nice. the success of Thrill. It literally saved Bandmade. That's awesome. As they dude. later learned that management was about to end their contract and that this single oh God. was going to be their last. It was wow. also the shock Van made needed to find their own path and start their world domination. From this moment, the band committed to make harder songs, and one and a half years later, they played their first concert overseas in Mexico. Well, that's awesome.
Look at the crowd's response. This is awesome. Yes, dude. That's so cool. Beans in Japan. <laughs>皆さんこんにちは。ミカです。今日はスペシャルゲストをご紹介します。レディットでアクティブに活動していてインタビューから私が元々聞いていた音楽はファンクロックやファンクなどでハードロックやメタルについてはほとんど知りませんでした。うん。2019年11月に以前から友人に勧められていたベビーメタの曲をYouTubeでいくつか聞いたらサイドバーにバンド
this is freaking legit. Okay, so we are going to keep this all in one video. We're going to watch the entire series, all three episodes in this one video together. But I just wanted to say, like, that answered every single question that I've had, and that was so well done, man. So very freaking awesome, awesome video that you did. First episode, absolutely crushed it. They answered every question. I mean, like, the research that had to have gone into this documentary is insane so thank you for doing all that it's amazing man it's really cool to know that it wasn't just something that once the idea was formed there wasn't just instant success i feel like a lot of people think that once you have a record deal or something like that it's just success can be kind of bought in a way even though the gimmick or like the image in a, of a maids in a rock band even though that seems like something that would just be like this would be really easy to sell to everybody didn't automatically garner them success. There's like a lot of things that you would think like, oh, after this happened, of course, they're just going to be successful. And no, man, they had to freaking earn everything that they got. This documentary has really opened my eyes to like how much they actually struggled to get to where they are right now. And it just makes me even appreciate their success that much more. It makes me want to support them even that much more. As a lyricist myself, I write lyrics all the freaking time. I'm really, really stoked to get in this next one. So let's get in that right now. Freaking swipe it. After its formation, band made consisted of five members, and the only guitarist was Konami. At this time, band made wasn't really a hard rock band, but it was something that all the members wanted to move towards. It was then decided that the addition of another guitar would help them achieve this vision. Yeah. So, they had two options recruiting a guitarist or having a remaining member learn to play a new <laughs> instrument. They knew they didn't want another member, so it was up to Psyche or Miku to fill this role. As expected, Psyche refused, so <laughs> Miku took responsibility as the founder of the band to learn to play guitar. At Dang. the beginning, Miku's guitar was little more than an ornament to make the pigeon look cool rather than an instrument to play mm -hmm. on stage. Miku had a lot to learn and not much time to practice, so she used to play oh some God. notes here and there without having a real impact on the song. There are even some songs where she didn't even hold her guitar. Oh, dang. Miku's That's wild. first guitar that is wild that was a Rickenbacker 620 that she used for practice and for concerts. Nice. She chose this guitar for its looks, as she didn't have any other knowledge of guitars back then. <laughs> Miku yeah. never thought about playing guitar. Like Misa, never thought about playing bass, but contrary to Misa, who fell in love with her instrument, Miku didn't like playing guitar that much. Aww. As she practiced, her fingers hurt, and she was <laughs> yeah, asked to play definitely. more and more, increasing this pain and the blisters. Aww. Not a great start for our pigeon and her guitar. As the years have passed by, bandmade songs have been getting more and more intense. Miku now had enough experience as a guitarist to notice that she needed a new guitar to match with this new kind of music. Fortunately, she joined Konami, who was invited to visit the Zomitis factory by Kanda Shokai from Kanda Shokai Corporation, Heck yes. the company that owns Greco guitars and Zomitis guitars. Yes. During this visit, Miku fell in love with the Zomitis A24MF. It for is its a badass looks and its guitar. heavy sound, so she asked if she could try this model. Since then, she's never stopped using <laughs> some Midas guitars. It is a badass guitar. Like, as a guitarist, it's one of the first things I recognized from her was, like, that's a unique guitar she's Song playing. after song, Miku was getting more guitar parts to play. And when she began to feel under pressure, and that was cool. the other members cared enough about Miku to tell her that it was okay to put it down if she wasn't sure that she wanted to continue playing guitar. And even though she did think about quitting the guitar, 
Miku didn't want to bring an additional member to Bandmade, so she just kept practicing to match the level required by these new songs. We know God, how much look of at a her. hard worker Miku is, so there was no way that she was going to give up. Also, with more songs with different tunings and more concerts to perform, Miku needed more guitars, so yeah. she added other Zemitis guitars to her collection, <laughs> like the Zemitis <laughs> CS24MF Aces and Eights. That is awesome. <laughs> Quick backstory, and I promise we'll get back into it, but I just want to say how much I relate to what she's got going on here. Whenever I first really was like, I really want to pursue music, I was in high school still, and a lot of high school bands, and I was just doing vocals. And by saying that, I was like literally just doing screaming metal vocals and a little bit of singing here and there i had all these bands that would just keep on flaking out and i really it was like my main goal was i want to play a show in nashville I want to play a show in nashville so i had this goal in mind but every band that i was playing with would just either like everybody's like too interested in getting high or drunk or something like that and would not practice enough to get enough songs down and really get their stuff together and form a band so talk to my cousin who is like a pretty big session drummer and he played a lot of drums for different bands like Alice Cooper, Kansas. He's done a lot of stuff like that. And I really looked up to him. So I called him one day and I was like, dude, I really want to be in a band. I really want to do this for a living, but I can't get anybody to really commit to it. And he was like, why can't you just practice by yourself? And I was like, well, I don't have a guitarist to write songs with. And he was like, why don't you learn how to play guitar? And I was like, I guess I can. He was like, don't wait for other people, man. Just do it yourself. Just learn how to play guitar and start writing songs that you want to write. So I started writing a lot of music and then I put it out on like online and uh, a guitarist reached out to me. He's like, dude, I really like the music that you're playing right now. And it was horrible, dude. I mean, I'd only been writing for like maybe at most like four or five months. And, uh, and so it was like just me playing and then screaming over it and like writing music and writing songs over it and stuff. This guitarist was like a freaking massive Metallica, Megadeth, just like really, really big fan of thrash metal. And he had like, he could play the solos, he could play everything on that. So he was like ridiculously better than I was at guitar. Me and him ended up starting this band and writing all these really overly complicated songs that were so freaking hard, but we were going to be playing them live and we booked a show in Nashville. And I'm like, I have to learn how to play these and sing this music. And so I remember just fingers bleeding after practicing so much and not stopping because I knew that I had to play the show in Nashville. Her playing, it just, I feel like I see that contrast and I know where she was at there. And like, it's awesome to be able to see some of these videos of her playing guitar and absolutely crushing it. She's a really, really good guitarist now. And I just, I'm, I know this has been a long pause. I just wanted to say that. Like, I can understand where she's at as a vocalist who started playing guitar so where she could continue doing what she loved. And then, really had to up her game because of what kind of music she was playing. I relate to this so freaking much, but that's very cool. And like, look at her now, man. Shreds. Added a lot of guitars over the years. Yeah. Electric and acoustic. And almost all of them are from Zemitis. And awesome. the special model was teased by Miku in early 2021 and confirmed a month later. A signature model named Flappy Pigeon. Flappy Pigeon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude. Zemitis that talked to Miku awesome. about making a custom guitar for her as a surprise present. She didn't believe them at first, <laughs> thinking it was a joke. At first, only the metal front design was planned to be customized, but Miku asked if she could also change the shape of the metal, oh, and dang. that this model fits her current settings. As Miku seemed to know what she wanted to do with her signature model, look Zemitis at these riffs she's playing. Her make any modifications she wanted to. She worked with a designer called Koji Takauchi, oh who God. helped her create this beautiful design. That is so Miku cool. Miku even used her handwriting for the logo at the center of the guitar. Oh my God. As expected, 
a lot of pigeons are visible everywhere the on this design. Pigeon. Miku said that Dude, she chose this name the with studio. the thought of being able to fly around the world with her guitar. The Zemitis Flappy Pigeon was sold on March 9th 2021 with a beautiful case and a certificate of authenticity that is so cool dude Mato Miku herself about a month later on April 16th a Miku Kabato special exhibition was announced oh my god the event took place in Ocha no Mizu Gaki Center from April 16th to May 5th and featured almost all Miku's guitars fans were able to check Miku's guitar collection and even buy a guitar or a Zemitis t-shirt. That's freaking awesome. T Shinji had the chance to visit this exhibition and shared some of his photos of the trip. Oh my god! Oh, that's awesome. She's got a little travel guitar, nice. A couple of them. had some really cool looking guitars man Shinji san arigato gozaimashita Mou hitori betsu no special guest niyoru special corner no jikan desu We actually have two guests Uwa, Oh guest ga futari mo Yeah we have two incredible guitars with us today Sore de wa special guest no futari to Hey, this is Axe from the Axe Japan YouTube channel uh, nice. from sunny Scotland. Uh, I've been playing guitar for about 26 years now. 26年も? I'm a songwriter, a performer, and a teacher. Of, of guitar. Oh, nice. The band made song that got me hooked on them was probably YOLO. ま、今回ですね、海外のバンドメイドファンコミュニティの方からこういうをかけていただきまして、え、コバトミクの so I'm not actually too sure when Miku started playing guitar, uh, but I get the impression uh, that she hadn't been playing guitar for long uh, when the band started. Um, and you can kind of see that from, uh, from early performances. Mm. Yeah. え、彼女がギターを始めたのがバンドメイド結成という ま、簡単なフレーズだったりとかしてもさすがにちょっとこう人前でま、ちょっと練習しただけでっていうのは厳しいのかなと思います。で、え、2013年にギターを始めたとして、え、ま、その後1年後のメイドインジャパンだったり
she was learning guitar, then why not have her just do backup for, you know, the main parts of the songs? Obviously. And two, like I will say on that, it adds a lot to the depth and texture of the sound live having that left and right stage guitar especially even for like whenever doing solos if she can even just strum like some chords like bar chords or something like that that adds so much to it it keeps that low end from dropping out whenever konami is doing some leads singing as well and you know you can tell if you go back and watch like early performances and stuff there are quite a few mistakes uh, on her part but yeah you can chalk that up to many things lack of experience mm -hmm. you know, obviously singing and playing is is not easy it's not the easiest thing in the world uh, it takes a lot of skill to do that. So there are mistakes here and there. If you follow the band closely over the years, uh, she has got so much better uh, playing guitar uh, and also singing and playing guitar. And also the confidence has grown a lot, especially the confidence. It really shows um, she's a lot more comfortable playing now and just letting loose. You can tell that she's not putting as much thought into it as she was before because it's all become second nature now to her. でも、この段階でもまあギターで決まった ま、一般の方がギターをやる3年 Obviously she had All right, so I gotta say this on that. He said that like three years and um, not in the traditional sense because she was promoting her band, she was playing shows, she was writing lyrics and stuff like that. I'm gonna have to go on and respectfully kind of agree and disagree on that. Like I know that she was obviously really busy, but like on tour especially, and if you're playing a lot, in my experience, anytime I've ever been on tour, I've played actually more music on tour than I ever do whenever I'm just at home. Because like at home, you've got all these different distractions. I feel like on tour, especially, you've got all, nothing else to do. I've written more music on tour. I've practiced more guitar on tour. I've gotten better at vocals. I feel like coming off of a tour, you're in like, you're in like this greatest shape kind of thing as a musician. You might be in horrible shape physically or something like that because you're just eating like garbage. But as far as musically and stuff, you're kind of like a peak physical condition musically as far as from my experiences. Uh, a great mentor in the band Konami. It would be amazing to have someone like that in the band to actually teach you. Mm -hmm. uh, but her progress um, has just come through, through practice. And when you're in a touring band, that's all you're doing, you know, you're playing the same stuff every night and yes. that's what practice is, it's just repetition. So, you know, being on the road uh, all the time, she's playing constantly. So yeah, she's bound to improve and that's exactly what's happened. He I think it. also her I agree. improvement on guitar has led to the evolution of the band. Mm. Uh, it's actually a very important thing that's happened um, during their career. I think Konami was a bit limited in terms of writing in the early days because she was basically only writing one guitar part. で、その後またえっと、2017年にはジャストブリングイットこれ僕大好きなアルバムなんですけど、私も大好きなアルバムです。なるほど。翌年にはまあワールドミネーションという流れになってきますけど、まあこの段階でギター歴が5年ですよね
コアトパートに耳を傾けていただけたらなと思うんですけど結構あの難しいことやってますあのこの歴で考えると相当ハードル高いことをやってるなと思いますで、えー、2021年ぐらいの、まあ、ギター歴8年かで、まあ、アンシンワールドですよね、えー、結構直近ですけどもアンシンワールドリリースしてで、まあ、正直あのまあ、自分も耳コピーしたりとかしてカバーするんですけど、まあ、アフターライフの B メロのバッキングとかすごいどぎも抜かれましたねあのあむずいって普通に思いました So8 years of playing guitar but her8 years of playing guitar is almost incomparable to anyone else's8 years of playing guitar because she started her guitarist career in a band so she, she actually started her career in this group with like dude Huh. It's wild. That's not even, there's no way to really even compare her guitar eight years with anyone else's. I don't know of another musician who has picked up guitar, been around other musicians that are as talented as she was around those musicians. I mean, like, she's got a lot of insane talent around her. And when she picked it up, she picked it up in a professional setting. I think most of the time, guitarists, I mean, in the traditional sense, as a guitarist, you're going to pick up guitar and then become professional if you're good enough. She picked up the guitar as a professional, and I don't know that there's a way that you can really even compare that to anything else. That's wild, actually, if you think about it. Very interesting, though. I mean, she's a phenomenal guitarist here. Look at what she's doing. Um, but now. That Miku is a lot more comfortable and has gained a lot of proficiency on guitar.、Uh, she's able to write parts with two guitar parts in mind.、Mm. And especially in the last couple of releases、uh, from Bandmade, there's a lot more songs that have separate guitar parts, like guitars one and two, where they'll do different things. And sometimes they'll even harmonize with each other. There's even some little lead things that. Miku does now. That's just a, a really nice evolution to see going from just playing chords back up all the time to actually playing、uh, some lead guitar.、Uh, totally agree. Which is really, really cool to see.、Uh, just to give you a quick example,、uh, if you take、Get、her、it. solo from the onset instrumental,、uh, which is basically this. <laughs> Chords, nice little g a l l o p We're in drop D, so you can basically bar. It's like one of the easiest things to do.、Mm -hmm. uh, to her solo in Cyan a k a d o r i where she's actually playing actual octaves in more of a solo environment, I guess. Yeah, most She's actually、definitely. doing stuff like that. That's just night and day from, you know, from a solo, like just a chord solo to actually doing octaves.、Mm -hmm. And I wouldn't be surprised in the next couple of albums that you will see her actually doing like some, some cool, like little lead stuff.、Uh, actual, maybe even some guitar dueling with Konami would be really awesome. Dude, hell yeah! Kobato san to Konami san no guitar t a i k e t s o m i t e m i t a i d e s And speaking as a guitar teacher myself, I can only imagine how proud Konami is of Miku and how far she's come.、Uh, and you can see it when,、uh, when they're playing together live, whenever, whenever Miku is doing a part that's more complicated than what she's used to.、Um, and you can see the look of, you know, she's doing it. Hell yeah. Face, which is,、uh, yeah, it's super nice to see. That's pretty cool. I think that's a good thing. 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 多少簡略化されててもまあそれは仕方ないなと思いますし、まあ、それでも十分あの難しいフレーズ弾いてるなというふうに私自身は感じていますで、えー、まあここ最近の曲なんかは特にそうですけどもうなんかもうメタリカバリのなんかゴリッゴリのバッキングをまあリズムキープしながらちゃんとこう観客に笑顔を見せつつステージングパフォーマンスをしつつ、えー、ちゃんとリズムキープしてるっていうのが。すごいなと単純に思います
、うん、で彼女のそういったあの安定感あるバッキングがあるから、まあ、ミンチョが結構自由なフレーズを奏でても、まあ、音が薄くならないというか結構ミンチョって単音フレーズだったりとかあ高音フレーズ弾いてることが意外と多いんですよねなので、えー、低音域中音域っていうのを、まああのまあ、もちろん低音はあのベースがあったりとかするんですけども、えー、その間の中音域だったりとかっていうのをしっかりとこう、uh, が yeah, まあ、見えているというような感じで、まあ、バンド全体としてちゃんと本当にバランスが取れているなという印象ですね。So yeah, like I said, I think、uh, Bandmade's musical evolution actually has quite a lot to do with Miku's improvement on guitar and、uh, you know, we can only Just、uh, look forward to seeing what comes next. You know, we might start seeing even more sort of complicated guitar arrangements、uh, involving two guitars. So, yeah, we just have that to look forward to. Oh, yeah. yeah. Just continue being proud of、uh, the progress that she's made. Yeah, まあ、あんまりあの普段こうやってあのコアとミクのギターをどうだとかっていうのをあまりこう真剣に考えたことがなかったんですけど、まあ、今回こういう機会をもらったので、まあ、いい機会になったなと思います。まあ、あのこれからも私はまあバンドメイドを応援していきたいなと思ってます。以上です。ギタリスト小鳩さんについてのお話、お二人ともありがとうございました。Over the years, this is very cool feature. Journey as a guitarist is probably one of the most unconventional. Yes. She literally started with zero knowledge and a guitar as a prop to evolve into the well trained guitarist that we know today. That、Miku's is guitar、awesome. became essential for Bandmade, and we can expect that she will have a bigger role to play in the future. Yes, the lyricist. It's wild that she's such a multi talented person. Even though Miku is writing most of the lyrics for Bandmade today, it was not the case during the first years of the band's activity.、Mm. It is very common for the debut of a band under a label that the management hires one or more lyricists to provide the songs for the band to perform. That was the case for Bandmade, who worked with Akutsu Kentaro. To write the lyrics of their first single and their first mini album called Made in Japan. Made in Japan. He even helped with the music and arrangement of Smile, which was released in 2019, a few years after、oh, their、cool. last collaboration. That's such a good bass line, too. After Made in Japan, Ben Made worked with other lyricists for the next two mini albums, New Beginning and Brand New Made. And、yeah. it was with Brand New Made that Miku finally got to show her writing skills, as she was able to debut her first lyrics for Alone. Oh, damn! The of Psyche. I love this song. This is a freaking awesome song. Dang! Such a clean song. She also did the lyrics for Yuragu and Freedom. Now you might wonder 
Why Miku's lyrics? How was this decided? Especially considering that before joining Bandmade, Konami worked as a singer-songwriter, mm, yeah. so she had the experience of writing lyrics. Nevertheless, Konami, Miku, and Saiki decided to try to write lyrics for a few songs. That's awesome. Saiki said that she wanted to write lyrics but couldn't come up with the right words. Mm. And Konami's lyrics were a bit too airy-fairy to match Bandmade's current ah. style. So they decided that Miku's lyrics fit the best. That's and awesome. Miku has her ways to get the inspiration she needs. Most of the time, when a song is done, she listens and takes notes about what's going through her mind. Then, she looks for ways to actually see what she has in her head, like watching movies, hmm. reading books, or searching materials on the internet. That's as really long cool. as writing lyrics doesn't become a duty, but something she can do whenever she wants, Miku enjoys going through this process over and over to write new songs. I really like that. That's very interesting. Let's take, for example, Influencer that was released last year. Badass song. Miku asked Saiki and Akane for a theme that could match with the song Konami wrote. And as Miku has been on TikTok for quite a while, Saiki suggested to talk about women living on social media. Oh, dang. The trend of influencers on social media grew a lot with the pandemic. Mm -hmm. So it was a great suggestion. Miku read a lot of interviews and analyzed the behavior of those influencers that inspired her for the lyrics. Oh, like having two accounts on Instagram, one secret where you post your daily life photos and talk to your friends, and a fake account where you post only good-looking pictures to attract more mm -hmm. followers. Miku also likes to employ words with multiple meanings or even puns as she did an influencer with the Japanese English pun for the lyrics chit chat, which means meaningless conversation in English, and chit cha, which means narrow minded in oh, Japanese. Oh, damn! <laughs> Psyche. Okay, really quick though, does she come up with the vocal melodies as well too? Whenever this song is written musically, the guitar parts and everything and the structure of the song is written, uh, does she come up with the vocal melody as well as the lyrics? Or is the vocal melody already, like, is there a guide track kind of vocally already there? She just puts lyrics to it. Singing it closer to the Japanese word to make the pun even harder to find for the Japanese audience. For songs tied to an existing media like openings or endings, Miku is very involved with the material that will be linked to the song. That's Last year, awesome. she released a song called With You for her side project, Klupo. Oh, damn. This song is the end title for the anime Smile of the Arsnotoria. And to write the lyrics, Miku read the novels hmm. and played the game from the same license to be in sync with the storyline. That's awesome. That's what I call true commitment. Yeah, it's dedication. Some songs are even written while bandmaids touring, like Spirit or Carry On Living, which was born in a cafe in Berlin. Or more recently, Memorable, which was written during the US tour, along with the filming of a music video shot in California. I love this song, I don't know man. I love this song, it's an awesome music. There is also one song that was written especially for the fans, as a gift from Bandmade, and planned for the Nippon Budokan concert that was cancelled due to COVID. Aww. It made a lot of us maniacs cry with its powerful lyrics that gave us hope when we were all having a hard time during the pandemic. And this song was about us.
That is so clean. Now, the very astute of you might have noticed that Miku has a special persona during interviews or when she's on stage. And not only when she's dressed with her maid costume, this habit is so imbued in her head that this verbal <laughs> tick is present in her private life too. もういいですけど。あ、<笑><笑><笑> <laughs> she wasn't always yeah. like this. During the first years of Bandmate, she didn't have this funny pigeon persona and talked more normally, but always with a great energy. I love that. バンドメイドと申します。え、私たちバンドメイドは先ほど紹介していただきましたように、メイドの服を着て<笑><笑> Once you get used yes, to Miku's talk love that. now, listening to her not saying po feels very weird, even though not everyone likes this side of her. Under Bandmaid's previous manager, she tried to bring her persona but was quickly discouraged to continue. Uh -huh. <笑>やめてくれって。恥ずかしいからやめてくれって。あの、マネージャーさんも今は違うマネージャーさんに変わったんです。でも、その前のマネージャーさんの時は、私たちちゃんとしてくださいって言われて。本当にやめてくださいって
it's awesome that she is like her personality shines so much through language barriers and also like the norms of cultural differences and stuff like that coming to america in nashville which is like a little southern place in america or whatever absolutely made everybody at the show that i was at die laughing numerous times she's hilarious and just funny and i love her personality man <笑>あ、<笑> <笑>ちょっと乗り乗りだった。ギブバック。ステップ。どうせならもっと、もっともっとクラップをして。じゃあ、メンバーをお願いします。気持ちで一緒にコバトもクラップするので、どうぞどうぞご協力よろしくお願いします。クラップ。ちょっと疲れちゃいました。ああ、the next but just a little bit. We have a lot of work for the next part. Dun, dun, dun. Uh, let me check. Oh, Omajinai time. Omajinai time, daisuki. Tanoshimi. I'm so excited to find out what that is. Jikai wa kanarazu, saigo ma de mimas. Dewa mina san, yo ichi nichi o. Nichi yobi ni o ai shimashu. Oh, yeah, he was releasing this like weekly? This is so well done, man. Okay, we've got one last video to watch together. I know this is going to be a long video on my YouTube channel as well, too. Holy crap, my YouTube's going to be like, what are you doing, dude? But it's really interesting to know, like, how she got started with everything she's such a tenacious character of a person and i think like her personality just shines man she definitely was made to do this i think this is exactly what she was meant to do in the world and i'm really loving seeing like how it's all came together and how she is the person she is imagine i time by the way i had never heard of it i never seen anything like any of the reactions that i ever done to them i never heard or saw anything of this whenever i went and saw them in nashville so i was completely blown away i had no idea what i was in in store for i was completely caught off guard and saying that i didn't know the importance of it okay i didn't know what it was none of that and i'm really excited to be getting that answered on this video so let's get into that final one right freaking out together swipe it <laughs> holy crap <laughs> yeah yes, <laughs> yes. That's right. today we are talking about Omaginai time, or magic spell time oh. in English, which comes from the maid cafes. It when comes from maid cafes? food in a maid cafe, the maid will say, Moi, Moi, Kyun, while making a heart symbol with both hands to cast a spell over your food and drink and make it even more delicious. One of the oh. more popular foods in a maid cafe is an amu rice, complete with a cute illustration drawn by the maid with ketchup. That looks Miku delicious. actually did one in the music video of Don't You Tell Me, but it, it didn't last very long. Oh, I didn't even notice this. I noticed that. 
so she was putting a spell on it right there? I had no idea. That is so cool. Yeah, she eats it. <laughs> oh, it's awesome. Smashes it. Yes, dude. This is so funny. As she worked for some time in two different maid cafes, Miku is using all her experience and has adopted it to the concert. Okay, I was wondering what these little signs sit in the back. That's what I was pausing it for. Okay, I like it. I like it. Oh, the structure is, um, well, <laughs> let's just say you will never experience the same Omaginai time twice. Yes, with that's so funny to know. She has a real talent for improvisation and uses it to engage with the audience. <laughs> Whoa. Whoa. You don't save my money. <laughs> She's like, oh, no, no, no. Yes. <laughs> yes. Okay. Mine, mine. During Omajinai time, the other members are totally free to hang around. Sometimes they just play together. Are you ready for one? That is so cool. Have fun. Wait, what are they doing? Something in the straw? Yeah! Was she drinking something? She's so dead. Look for trouble. <laughs> Or try to avoid trouble. She's like, nope, nope. <laughs> there was even a time when each member took a turn at the drums. Okay. Yes. I love that it's so interactive like this. It's so cool. There you go. Yes! <laughs> Get it, Misa. <laughs> yes! Oh, and then she gets on it. Oh, God. In heels! <laughs> this is so funny. But most of the time, it goes like this. Explanations. Almost time is the magic spell time. Yes. Mm -hmm. Repeat words. I say moi moi, you say? Moi I say kyu kyu, you say? Miku crying because the masters and princesses didn't make enough noise. <laughs> wow! No, 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 Repeat words again. And po. You get the picture. <laughs> yes. Depending on the stage, Miku walks a lot during her Omajinai time. Yeah, she's all over she the freaking place. Runs out of energy. She even left the stage once to go off into the middle of the crowd for one of her funniest moments. <laughs> what is she doing? She's like, come here. Hello. Yeah. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> Unfortunately, with the pandemic, Bandmaid was not able to perform live for a long time, but Aww. they found a solution. Online Okujis. Their first online mm. concert was performed on July 23rd, 2020 at Harabutai in Tokyo. And even though there was no audience in the venue, every member had a lot of fun. So they continued to stream live concerts five more times between 2020 and 2021. Oh, that's so cool, though. Of course, Omajinai time was shorter, but Miku did the call and response. Yes, with the dude, I love the that. Camera which was quite funny. <laughs> and I'm sure that a lot of you actually cheered at your screen like you were there. I love that she did this. This is so cool, dude. pandemic can't stop Miku from performing her magic spell. <laughs> In the end, Omajine time is a special moment between Miku and the audience. That is so freaking she cool. she is giving the best of herself, whether the audience is there or not. And you can't help but smile with pure happiness and joy during these few minutes of fun interactions with her. God. Miku's Omajine time is now a part of Bandmade and something to look forward to when you attend a Bandmade serving in the future. Whether you're a fan of it or not, you can't deny that Miku is an incredible entertainer. Preach. And she is great at bonding with the crowd. She's a freaking superstar. And her Omajine time is something that I believe only she can do. Yeah. <laughs> I like that she laughs at herself too, you know? <laughs> wow yes she's so wild dude she's so funny live middle-aged man what all right how do you relate the little pigeon This is actually the most accurate description of Miku, confirmed by each and every member and Miku herself. That is so funny. Despite her cute look, she is a middle-aged man inside. <laughs> this ridiculous, dude. comes from the fact oh, that God. her taste, uh. words, and gestures are old-fashioned. For example, like old she likes to eat man. dried flying fish or dried salmon, which smells very bad. <laughs> she also likes sochu and sake, which yes. both are seen as older men's drinks in Japan. <laughs> Talking about alcohol. She is the one who can drink the most amongst bandmate members. Dang! Regarding her hobbies, Miku has been into horse racing for a <laughs> long, long time. When she was little, Miku what? played a game called Chocobo Stallion, which oh, was released yes. in 1999 on PlayStation. One day, I love she was racing. told by her mother that this game looks a lot like horse racing. So Miku looked into the sport, and since that day, she has spent a lot yes. of time watching live horse races during the weekends. Around 2012 really or cool. 2013, she bought her first tickets and went to a racetrack right after moving to Tokyo. Oh, that's so cool! Later on, she even invested in a horse called Blue Rose Ship. What? Miku confessed in an interview that she would love to be able to spend more time with horses as it's a real passion for her. Aww. Her dream would be to compete with a horse named Krupo, 
She loves to imagine That's the awesome. commentator saying Krupo, Krupo during a race and announcing that Krupo <laughs> won. <laughs> that would be funny on so many levels mm-hmm. to hear that on television. <laughs> Miku also loves to play poker. What? She is a middle-aged man. I love that. It's so funny. Miku participated in an open poker tour in 2022 and finished in second place. Oh, dang. She's so competitive that she tweeted shortly after this defeat to show how frustrated she was. (laughs) Miku also appeared on a TV show produced by the singer Gact called Poker Cross Poker, industry one-on-one tournament in 2018, where each contestant represents different industries like idol, motorsports, actress, boxing, or magician. (laughs) And as you can imagine, Miku was the representative of the maid industry. Unfortunately, she lost against Ririka Suto, who represented the idol industry and won with the most incredible luck during the last round. I mean, that is wild. Yeah, Oh. Oh. Oh my god. Uh, <laughs> turn around, she's like, nope. Nope, that did not just happen. I'm sorry, you were scared. Oh god. Miku is also a huge fan of Miffy, a fictional rabbit created in the Netherlands in 1955. A lot of people assume that Miffy is a Japanese brand, as it resembled Sanrio's characters like Hello Kitty. Okay. But Hello Kitty actually was introduced for the first time 20 years after Miffy. Still, Miffy is very popular in Japan, with a lot of stores all over the country. Miffy. Miku posted a lot of photos of her Miffy merchandise on Instagram over the Aww. years. We also know that Miku used to play video games, and we can assume that she continues in her free time. Well, she cool. even streamed live while she was playing PUBG Mobile in 2020. Is made outfit crushing people? I love this. That is so funny. Dude, the research that has gone into this is insane and amazing. What a what a chicken did. Yeah. A tough little bit. I just can't get over a middle-aged man. That's so funny, dude. That is so funny. Do you remember when I told you that when she was little, Miku often came back home with a lot of bumps and bruises? Mm-hmm. Well, actually, it never stopped. Aww. Miku had several injuries over her years with Bandmate. Aww. Psyche talked quickly about this subject in the Gold Rush interview, and we can see that Miku's legs had a lot of bruises. Mm-hmm. <laughs> She's already seen. She falls into a ditch? Jeez! Good God! You're full of wounds! <laughs> In another the way that they're saying Miku full of wounds is so funny. Doing some washing, a glass fell off, shattered at the sink, and a part of the broken glass hit her thigh. Aww. She had 10 stitches. Oh my god! Her. We can actually see the look of her scar on this photo. Oh Miku my god! Also broke her ribs at least twice one time during the pandemic, and one time during a tour a few years ago. And you know how energetic she oh. was on stage. But despite the pain, she went through the performance without making anything worse. Wow. All the members often joke about Miku being cursed or having bad luck with all these incidents. Mm. 
Like this story, when Miku was in a taxi and the driver got into a car accident. Oh my god! She also laughs about the fact that she hits walls and doors all the time, so we can imagine that she's used to hitting everything around her. With everything that's happened and probably still is happening to her, we can say that Miku is a tough little pigeon. <laughs> Miku participated in several episodes of Japan in Motion. At first, Japan in Motion was just a series of videos introducing different parts of Japan, until TSS TV worked with No Life, a French TV channel, to turn it into a TV show. This project started in 2009 featuring foreign personalities discovering different places all over the country with a dedicated guide. Well, that's cool. After three seasons, it featured only Japanese personalities like Paspo and Kiari Pamyu Pamyu. No dang. Japan in Motion uploaded the episodes in Japanese on their YouTube channel, and they were dubbed in French for No Life until 2018 when it switched to the channel J1. During those episodes, hmm. we follow Miku while she's discovering different places with their that restaurants, is so cool. shops, activities, and their beautiful landscapes. From a neighborhood in Tokyo to the surroundings of Mount Fuji. Aww. And it worked pretty well when she was on the show, as the three most viewed videos from the YouTube channel feature Miku. Oh, dang. While she's just got like a great personality that people just want, they're interested in what she's doing. Like, I would love to watch her walk around Japan and just experience stuff. I love that idea. But she's like, she's just such an interesting person. In Kichijoji, a neighborhood in the city of Musashino in western Tokyo, Miku went to a shooting bar and tried different weapons. Oh, nice! Yes! <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> she had like one. <laughs> that is Note so cool. that she is shooting with airsoft guns mm -hmm. and not real ones. In Japan, firearms are very rare among the population and the law is very strict about firearms. A license is needed to own a weapon and few dare to try to own a license. Mm. But it's pretty funny to see someone in a maid outfit shooting with big guns. Dude, whenever I saw that, that's a Desert Eagle, and uh, I've shot like a 50 cal, so whenever she, was, whenever she was about to shoot it, I was like, oh my god, no way, no way she's about to shoot this gun, and then it went doop, and I was like, wait, what? So yeah, I picked up Airsoft pretty quickly, because that gun has a crap load of recoil, and it's a very heavy gun, and uh, yeah, I had one of those for a little while. Now, this might sound odd, but Bandmaid takes April Fool's Day very seriously. Yes! On April 1st, 2018, Bandmaid announced that they were breaking up oh to God. create a new band called Band Maiko. <laughs> Under new names and looks, the members <laughs> of Band Maiko mixed hard rock and Michael-style spirit. A Maiko is an apprentice geisha in Kyoto. <laughs> <laughs> Their jobs consist of performing songs, dances, and playing the shamisen or other traditional Japanese instruments for visitors during special events. Band Maiko released the MV of a song called Secret Maiko Lips, a Maiko adaptation from the band-made song Secret My Lips, using a dialect from Kyoto. They went off on this, man! I, love it. I freaking love it. The next year, Band Maiko released a mini album with seven songs adapted from Band Made, but also with what? one original song called Gyon Cho along with a new MV. What? I love their dedication. Oh, 
That's still so good. Miku announced a solo project called Klupo with the digital release of a single named Peace and Love. She looks so different there. I don't know what it is. Something looks very different. This time, they took the joke pretty far as Klupo came with an official website, oh my an God. online shop, a YouTube channel, what? accounts on Twitter and Instagram, and a spot on Pony Canyon's website. This project off. creates a new music genre called Hippie Popo <laughs> and reinterprets the good old 70s music in a lovely and peaceful way. With Klupo, Miku goes from a black and white maid outfit to a very colorful hippie long dress. I love it. Her goal is the opposite of bandmate who want to dominate the world, as Klupo is aiming for world peace. <laughs> Klupo released the music video of Peace and Love on April 1st, 2021, to follow with a new song entitled Flapping Wings on August 10th, to celebrate the physical release of her single, limited to 3,900 copies. She also appeared in some interviews and radio shows over the year. After the physical release of Klupo's single, we wondered if she would come back or if it was just a one-time thing. Klupo. And on January 5th, 2022, Klupo announced Hatiful, her first EP to be released on March 9th, which is Miku Day. Oh. Mika, can you explain what is Miku Day? Yes, Miku. Okay. Thank you, Mika. We oh, didn't nice. have awesome. that much information about this EP, but a month later, the set list and an MV were announced. Hatiful will include Peace and Love, Flapping Wings, along with four brand new songs. Among those new songs, Pogo was chosen for a music video that was premiered on February 23rd, 2022. Dang. Listen to the music that's going on there, too. If you look closely at the set list, you may be able to notice something. Let's see. Peace and Love, Pogo, hmm. Flapping Wings, Hua Hua, Voice, Superstar. Hmm. Hmm. Oh! Ha, I get it. Peace and Love wa hippie boy kakko steiru. Okay, okay, okay. Misa -san. Yes! And Pogo for Akane because of the famous gorilla called Pogo. Ah. Fua Fua for Konami because, you know, that's Konami. Voice wa vocal no Saiki -san. Oh, that's so cool. And finally, Superstar. Could it be for Bandmate? And what they aspire to become? Well, this has never been confirmed, but it's very interesting to imagine really why cool, Miku though. chose those song titles. A few months later, Klupo continued to surprise us with a new single called With You, which was chosen as the ending theme for the anime Smile of the Arsenatoria. And so once again, so cool. a beautiful MV was released for this song. I need to check this out, man. Klupo. Freaking love the name, too.
so cool. Over two years of activity, Klupo released seven songs and four music videos, which is a lot considering how busy Miku is with Bandmade. Mm -hmm. And even though we don't have any news about Klupo for 2023, we can expect her to come back in the future. I want the rock Freaking conclusion? It's been two hours, guys. Holy crap. What an epic well, story. This is now the time to end our journey with Miku. Mm -hmm. Yes, already. Aww. It's been a long journey, though. Well, she went through a lot. She had to live without a father very early in her mm. life. Thankfully, Miku's mother and grandmother were here for her at that time. And Miku is so tough. Heck yeah. Even though she sometimes talks about her dark thoughts, she always did her best to overcome them, move on with her life, and never give up. As soon as she knew that she wanted to become a singer, Miku did everything to reach her goal. Even if she sacrificed a lot of hours of sleep, she managed to earn Feel enough that. to move to Tokyo and went from working as a maid to winning an idol contest. But this experience taught her that being an idol wasn't her thing. Mm. And when Miku finally had the opportunity to start her own project and create this miracle band, she had to find a way with the other members to become popular enough to pursue her dream. Hell yeah. So she did what she does best, worked harder. Miku invited everyone she knew to the concerts, worked in a noodle cafe, sold tickets by hand, and God. promoted bandmade as much as possible. Of course, she wasn't alone, as all her bandmates helped to promote their mm. band. But as the creator and public image of bandmade, she gave everything to avoid being disbanded. Aww. And all their efforts paid off when they chose to shoot the MV of Thrill instead of Aito Junetsu no Matadoru. This particular choice led to the birth of a fast growing overseas fan base yeah. and a huge boost in their popularity. Oh my God. This was the momentum Bandmade needed to reach the point where they could start to write their own songs and become the hard rocking band that we know today. Without Miku's hard work, her love for made cafes, and this idea to mix cool music with cute outfits, band made would never have existed. Preach. With the miraculous creation of this impossible band, our five favorite maids continue to pursue the same dream, living as professional musicians and dominating the world through music. As long as Bandmade will continue to play their music, we can say that they are making the world a better place. Yes! God, how freaking awesome! I just want to say again how much I love this project. This was so well done. Aww. Heck yes. That was such a freaking epic, epic story. Like, ah, you cannot write something like that. It's beautiful how much they actually had to go through to get to where they are now. And I cannot wait to see what the future holds for them. I seriously think that there are even greater things in store in their horizons and i cannot wait i'm a part of it now and i'm freaking here man i'm here for it a thousand percent thank you again for creating such a beautiful documentary the voiceovers were amazing everything was perfect the storyboarding all the research that went into this all the i can't even imagine how many hours something like this would have taken but for real thank you for all the hard work you put into this everybody on that project crushed Thank you guys. And thank you again to Mason for suggesting this to me on our Patreon and supporting us over there. 
Huh. What a freaking epic story this has been. I can't wait, man. Now I gotta get in some more music videos. And as always, what we're gonna be doing is moving forward, I'm gonna be watching a music video on here on YouTube and then a live performance on our Patreon. Then we'll also be going through and watching a lot of their live concert DVDs on our Patreon as well too. So if anybody wants to come over there, check those out. There's a link in the description below. I'm gonna be linking the original three videos that we just reacted to in the description as well. Please go give some love over there. Thank you guys again. I hope you all are having a blessed day or night, whatever time it is you're watching this. Spread some positivity out there. Be kind to each other. And if anybody needs anything at all, all of my socials are at John Reeves Live. Feel free to send me a message and I will totally catch y'all then. Freaking toodles!